Hi, this is Pastor Dave, the interim pastor at uh, St. Luke uh, in Sheboygan Falls. Very nice congregation. <laughs> I'm thankful they're able to uh, put the Bible study out on the website. Uh, and the sermon was talking about the importance of, of God's word and suggested that they have a Bible study. And many said we, we used to, but then COVID hit. And we haven't uh, since. And so they asked if I could provide a Bible study. And I thought Advent was a good time to do so. And so we're looking at the beginning verses, chapters of the three Gospels. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that talk about uh, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, we looked at Mark. Uh, that is the oldest Gospel. Uh, the that really begins with Jesus' description of who he is as the Savior and God's Son, the promised Messiah, and then his baptism. And then Matthew uh, tells us how God's plan of sending a Savior was fulfilled as promised. It's part of history and uh, tells us about the, uh, the story of the wise men coming. And now we're going to look at the uh, most beloved Christmas story. Probably many of you memorized it, parts of it as a children pageant that you recited at your church at Christmas. Uh, the story of the angels coming and the, the shepherds uh, and just the wonder of, of uh, Christmas as St. Luke, guided by the Holy Spirit, uh, shares Jesus' birth. We'll start with a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Uh, the word written, the word made visible in the sacraments of baptism and Lord's Supper. Uh, the word preached uh, from sinners uh, who have experienced God's grace and want others to learn that we are saved by grace through faith and then the the living word our savior jesus whose birth we prepare for and celebrate and whose second coming we we await with joy when he will come and gather the nations before him and uh, bring forth the final judgment amen well thank you for attending i know it's not I said to my wife, I'm more interactive and I like uh, having people <laughs> uh, at the Bible study. So I'm learning and thanks to the, the opportunity to serve at St. Luke and trying the best I can. But we are looking at the Gospel of Luke. It's one of the synoptic Gospels. The look with one eye, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all share kind of the same view of events each one from their own perspective, lifting up things that are important to them that the Holy Spirit revealed. And again, we have four gospels, so we have four witnesses to, to the events of Jesus' birth, his life, his ministry, his death. They all focus really upon his, his death, his sacrifice for our salvation, and then the wonder, the miracle, of the resurrection on Easter. Uh, but Luke was, uh, the Gospel of Luke was written, they believe around 85 AD. So about, about 50 years after Jesus' death, uh, the apostles were telling people about uh, Jesus and that Christians uh, were being persecuted. The faith was spreading. Uh, Domitian was the emperor at that time and was known to be very cruel, uh, to torture, to kill Christians, uh, to have them uh, put in the, uh, the, what's the, with the gladiators and uh, terrible uh, suffering and pain. But Luke, uh, probably as a, a Gentile, he was a physician. It says he was a friend of Paul, mentioned in Acts. Uh, 
he wanted to write, as he says in his introduction, a two-part account uh, from those who shared uh, eyewitness accounts of Jesus' ministry. And then he tells of the, the early the church and the work in the book of Acts. So the two books that Luke wrote are the Gospel of, of Luke, which we'll look at the beginning, parts of the beginning, and then the book of Acts. He wrote a two-volume set. <laughs> and uh, just uh, amazing in how the Holy Spirit guided him. This is his introduction. St. Luke writes, since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, it's been fulfilled among us, we've experienced it, just as they were handed on to us by those who were, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of, of the word. Uh, he spoke with the disciples and, and those who witnessed uh, the actual accounts that he is going to write about. I, too, decided, after investigating everything carefully, he's a doctor, from the very first, to write an orderly account to you, most excellent Theophilus. Theophilus. He's writing this for Theophilus. And we're not sure if that was a, a sponsor, a wealthy uh, Greek, a Roman, uh, the word means lover of God, Theophilus. So it could just be kind of in a secretive way he's writing this for all lovers of God. Um, or there may be an actual person named Theophilus. But I, I kind of like he's writing it for us, the lovers of God, so that you may know the truth. And Jesus said, you may know the truth and the truth will set you free concerning the things about which you have been instructed. So here's his account. And again, wrote two part series, the birth of Jesus, his coming into the world, his ministry, death, resurrection, and then how the Holy Spirit uh, empowered birth the church on Pentecost and then follows the, the early disciples as they would spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. His, Saint Luke begins his gospel in the following ways familiar to us. In the days of King Herod, again, a historical figure known to be ruthless, suspicious, mean, there was a priest named Zechariah and Elizabeth in old age. And then he tells how uh, in their old age, they didn't think they could have a child, kind of similar to Abraham and Sarah. But then God blessed them with a child. Uh, Zechariah was a priest. He was kind of doubtful. And God kind of punished him for his doubt by saying he could not speak until his child uh, was born. Yeah, that would be hard for a priest, a pastor. You can't, can't tell others about God, about God's favor, his forgiveness. Uh, and then Elizabeth, the aunt of Mary. Uh, in her old age, she would bring forth a child. Do you know who the child was? It was John the Baptist. Uh, the one who was perhaps the forerunner of the prophet that God said would come before the Messiah was born. Elijah would come. The Jews still uh, wait for Elijah. And during Passover, uh, they put out a chair uh, in their gathering that says, that's for Elijah. If he comes, he will be welcome to our Passover uh, meal. But it was prophesied that a prophet, Elijah, would come, and people saw John the Baptist as that forerunner of the Messiah. And uh, we don't have time to go into all the details of, of John the Baptist. Birth. And then we jump down, it says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, 
was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Just a couple things there. Angel Gabriel, this is where we name our, learn the name of the angel who God sent to come and announce uh, the Savior's birth. And an angel, that word angelos means messenger. He's a messenger from God. Uh, the word Gabriel means God is my strength. The hero of God. So he's kind of a, uh, almost a military uh, figure who's bringing power, who's bringing might, strength. In the book of Daniel, uh, Gabriel is mentioned. Uh, that he he spoke to Daniel and helped him kind come to understand. He came to Zechariah, the priest, uh, the uncle of Mary, and helped uh, Zechariah understand who his son would be to prepare the way of the Lord. There are only three angels uh, that are named in the Bible. We have Gabriel. God is my strength, the hero of God. And then another one mentioned in the book of Revelation, I believe, is an archangel, and that's Michael. And his name means who is like the God, who is like God, who is like God, Michael, Michael. The other, the third angel, do you know who that is? That's uh, Satan, Lucifer, the bringer of light, the schemer. And those are the three angels that we have mentioned by name in the Bible, but they're messengers. And of course, Satan uh, was an angel. Uh, we believe that he rebelled against God, wanted to take his throne, his power, and he and the other dark angels, uh, God prepared the place for them, suffering, pain, and, and uh, anguish sent them to hell. But it says the angel Gabriel came to Nazareth to a virgin, and that's uh, Virgin Mary, uh, we'll be told, and uh, he, she is engaged, again, not married yet, engaged to a man named Joseph, and he was of the house and lineage of David. Matthew has the uh, genealogy, the traces the ancestors back to really Adam and Eve, uh, Abraham, to David, to uh, Jacob, to Ruth, to others, uh, Solomon. And now we hear that Joseph is of the house of David. That was from whom the Savior, the promised Messiah, would be born. It says the virgin name was Mary, and he came to her. The angel comes to her. And again, this was pretty much a male-dominated world. But God is coming to this lowly uh, young woman, not yet married, and he says, greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. <laughs> That's what God says to us. And the Holy Spirit comes to us. Greetings, you are my favored one. God is with you. I hope you always feel that. That God loves you. But Mary was much perplexed by the angel's words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Mary is one who contemplates, reflects. She takes God's word seriously. Be still. We're always, and I'm guilty of this, always quickly moving on. It's hard to just contemplate, ponder. I appreciate Mary for that. She's perplexed. She doesn't understand. How would you feel an angel appears to you? Maybe you've had an angel in your life. When I ask, you know, have you had somebody like an angel come to your life? A lot of people share stories. And I 
I've had that happen. My wife and kids were young. We were traveling in Minnesota. I'm talking in the middle of nowhere. And our car broke down. And I thought, what are we going to do? And out of the clear blue, we hadn't seen a car for miles. A car comes driving by. And the man turns around. And he knows cars and mechanics. And he looks and he says, oh, I see what's wrong. And he says, you know, I have a, a farm up here and I have a, a car lift and I have some old cars and I'd be happy to help you out. We were a little nervous and perplexed and scared, but he said, you can drive your car and we'll get you to my farm. We got there and sure enough, he had a, a like a little garage and a barn. He lifted the car up. He had old cars, the same as our car. He took off the part. He put in the part. He said, I should be fine. I, I said, what, what do I owe you? He said, that's my gift to you. I was perplexed. But to me, that was an angel. <laughs> that he drove by that moment, that he had the ability, the means to fix us and to help us keep going safely. And others have told me, you know, I had a flat elderly woman. Out of the clear blue, two young men came. <laughs> Fix my tire, get me going. Or an angel, you know, as they were sitting at the side of child angel came to him don't worry god is with you i hope you've had those angels and i have a feeling maybe you're an angel to a lot of people god says uh, be aware of strangers and show them hospitality because they too are angels uh, disguised in our midst but god continues to send angels like gabriel in our midst, to those who are troubled and perplexed. And the angel says, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. The promise of new life. And you will name him Jesus. That word Jesus, as I've said, in the Hebrew, Yeshua, Joshua means God saves. And then our Gabriel says, and he will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. That's the Messiah down from the lineage. He will reign over the house of Jacob. Again, that, that lineage from whom the Savior would come. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. <laughs> That's God. That's Jesus. That's why he came, to establish his kingdom. Here on earth, we can experience his goodness now and fully unto eternity. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I am a virgin, she did not have, she was righteous, holy. She was engaged in no sexual relationships uh, with Joseph. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit, will come upon you and the spirit, the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the son of God. And then that just, he's the son of Mary, the son of man. He relates to us. He knows the struggles we have in our, our flesh and the world, but he's also conceived of the Holy Spirit. And, and so he is God. Almighty, that tiny little baby. That's God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit wrapped in the swaddling clothes. And then to help Mary, and I think for us too, when we have our struggles and, and don't fully understand, he provides the means to, to help Mary believe. And he says, and now your relative Elizabeth, Again, her aunt in old age has con also conceived a son. And this is a sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing 
will be impossible with God. Isn't that true? <laughs> we live in tough times. And our own abilities, our own flesh, we feel like we might fail and fall short. And oftentimes we do. But we got to remember, as Gabriel said, the thing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, and this is how we should respond, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. She is a woman of faith. She trusted what the angel said. She trusted with God nothing will be impossible. She knew God would help her uh, to believe, even while she's yet not fully understanding. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. May we be servants. May we trust God. Say, here I am, God. Use me. Uh, according to your will and your word. And then the angel departed from her. Oh, that's just uh, yeah, a beautiful <laughs> account of the Savior's birth. Let's just sing a, a little verse about angels and Gabriel and, and the even greater revelation yet to come. Angels from the realms of glory, angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. That's the invitation. Come. Worship Christ, and like Mary, may we say, and the servant of the Lord, here I am. Nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary does visit Elizabeth. Her faith is strengthened, and she sings a praise song, the Magnificat. I only have time to just read the beginning. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servants. <laughs> I love Mary <laughs> and the church. There is a, a Lutheran church in Kenosha named St. Mary, but because of a lot of the battles with Catholicism, we don't always uh, lift up the blessed mother of our our lord as we should but she was a woman of faith and uh i know in my chaplaincy there have been many times where i've uh, visited catholic residents who are on their deathbed and i saw the great comfort that they received uh, as they lifted up the uh, rosary and holy mary mother of god Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Um, and again, they would say they're not praying unto Mary, but they're asking her uh, as the saints intercede on our behalf to um, help them during this difficult time. But Mary, we do give thanks. She's not... Uh, any uh, different than us, she was a sinner, yet a saint, whom God chose and who was faithful in carrying out uh, the task that God placed upon her to be uh, the mother of our Savior, Jesus. And then John the Baptist, we're told, is, is born. Again, we don't have time to go into it, but now I want to get to the, the most beautiful Christmas story 
of the four Gospels. It says, in those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This was the first taxation that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And again, historical. You can look it up in the history books. This this was real. It's not it's just a made-up myth. Uh, Emperor Augustus reigned from 31 BC, so 31 years before Jesus was born, to 14 AD. And he established a reign of peace. And that's when Jesus was born. But because he wanted this registration, this taxation, uh, while we think he's in charge, he's the emperor, God's really making even him uh, do things that will accomplish the prophecy fulfillment of the Savior's birth. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was who was expecting a child. Now, again, if, if Caesar didn't order that taxation, that registration, the prophecy wouldn't be fulfilled that Jesus the Messiah would be born in this lowly, unknown town of Bethlehem. As I said in a previous Bible, so Bethlehem means house of bread. It's the house of David, uh, where this from whom the Messiah would be born. And it's said in Micah, the Savior will be born in, in Bethlehem. Uh, the wise men asked Herod, where was the Savior to be born? And they are told in Scripture it says Bethlehem. But now we're told why Dave or J Joseph and Mary are there. It was because of this taxation. The God was, you know, even the king, the the Caesars, are but uh, tools of His salvation. And then it says uh, while they were there. The time came for Mary to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, swaddling clothes, and laying him in a manger, a feeding trough for animals, because there was no place for them in the end. And that's sad. The world had no place for Jesus. Sadly, today, <laughs> I don't think things have changed too much. Most people are too busy. They got too many things going on. They say, I don't have time for church. I don't have time for God. I'm busy. You know, you drive to church on a Sunday, you see people out jogging. You see in houses, TVs are on. They're doing yard work. You say, boy, the world hasn't really changed much. We don't have room for the Savior. <clears throat> I think one of the early forefathers of the faith said, when we're born, our heart is created with an emptiness. Uh, and the only thing that will fill that emptiness is Jesus in our heart. And so we gotta make time, make room, welcome him in to our, our hearts, our lives, then we know true fulfillment, true peace, uh, true purpose and meaning in our lives. But tradition is, you know, an innkeeper uh, did say, go to my stable. And really what a fitting place for the Savior to be born. What'd you think of Joseph? He was a carpenter. <laughs> He probably wanted to have a beautiful home to welcome his new child. He had to be born in a in a barn. <laughs> and Mary, I'm told that mothers, and I know my wife had that nesting instinct where you suddenly get an urge to clean, make sure everything's ready for the 
the newborn in here, a dirty stable, a manger with hay and animals. I'm sure part of their hearts were broken, but then we see this is the most beautiful place of all for the Savior to be born. And that says in that region there were shepherds. Shepherds were very lowly people on the fringe of society. They were usually looked upon like gypsies. They'd come and go. If there was a crime in the town, the, the shepherds would be blamed. They, there were laws against them uh, serving in office or testifying in court. But these will be the first uh, witnesses to the Savior's birth. It says, there are shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Again, the world's in darkness. Still is. Darkness of sin. Then an angel of the Lord shone around them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Well, and the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so afraid. Oh. But the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, the gospel for all people. Not just a select few, this is for all people. As John said, for God so loved the world, everybody, each person, individually, no matter what your background, no matter what your race, no matter what your, your status, if you're a lowly shepherd, if you're, <laughs> there's no room for you in the end. This is good news. For to you is born this day in the city of David, Bethlehem, as it was prophesied, a savior who is the Messiah, the anointed, promised deliverer who will establish God's kingdom here on earth and unto eternity, the Lord. That's the good news that St. Luke and Mark and John and Matthew are telling us, that we need to tell others. A simple message. And then let the Holy Spirit work on that part, person's heart. And this will be a sign for you. Again, God gave Mary, Elizabeth, and Zechariah a sign. And now he gives the shepherds a sign. This will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. Simple. Boy, that's a sign that this is the Messiah. <laughs> a little baby lying in a manger wrapped in bands of cloth. But if the Holy Spirit gives you eyes to see, you'll believe. You'll be changed forever. And suddenly there was with the angel multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to all. Oh, that's the promise. As I said, I, I think you've seen angels in your life. And you know people like them who bring that message, who help you come out of the darkness into the light to see the Savior in your midst. And, and then these lowly shepherds uh, say, let's do what the angels told us. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, again, they could have said, it's over. We're done, the shepherds said to one another. Let us go now to Bethlehem, the house of bread, David's house, where the bread of life is now born, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste. Man, they're in a hurry. <laughs> they want to see, excited. And there they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Simple. I think Jesus came as that lowly child. Didn't want to impress us. He wanted us to love him. And uh, you who are blessed with children or grandchildren or nephews, nieces, you know the wonder of holding that little baby in your arms and the innocence and the desire that you say, I want to 
protect that child. We want to protect our Lord, serve him, make his life here on earth a good instead of being part of the sinners, and which we are. That will bring him sadness, pain, suffering. When they saw this, the shepherds saw us, they made known. Again, they're the first witnesses with the angels. What had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. <laughs> we can be like the shepherds. You know, just pastors, the word pastor means shepherd. And I know you're waiting for your the call of your shepherd. But each of us are shepherds in our own way. Lowly people. Who believe me, when you tell people about the Savior, your witness is so much more powerful than us who are up in the pulpit. So share your faith. Simple way like the shepherds. And it says, but Mary treasured again. She's still. She's calm. She's treasured. Sweet treasure, our little ones. All these words and ponder them in her heart. Again, I hope you take that time to treasure, ponder, the wonder, the beauty of the Christmas story. The shepherds return. They got to get back to work, glorifying their change, praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them. Yeah, we can't just isolate ourselves at the manger in the stable we got to get back out into the world and do the task that god gives us maybe like lowly shepherds they're hard they're difficult they're a night job but god says do what you can and then in the midst of it tell others that god is here in our midst he loves us he wants to bless us he wants to save us uh, come with me to the manger and behold the wonder and the beauty of the Savior. Christmas is a good time, my friend, for you to invite somebody to come with you to church. Somebody's waiting, hoping. Boy, I wish I could go to a Christmas Eve service. I'm not going to go by myself. Or I wish someone had a Christmas Day service, but boy, I'm not going to show up to church. Just all by myself, I wouldn't know what to do, what's proper, what's correct. But if you just simply say, come with me, you be an angel, a shepherd. You be Mary and Joseph who bring the Savior into that person's life. And they will be changed forever through the, the grace, the love, the goodness, the peace that God brings. I'll close, you know, that angels say peace on earth, and the Jewish word is shalom. God brings shalom to us. And that, that isn't just a peace when there's no conflict or wars or battles. It's more a sense where everything is in place. It's as God intended. And it's a, a, a goodness in our soul we're spiritually at rest we're still in our mind we're not agitated we have a peace of mind uh, emotions physically god brings a peace even though we might have aches and pains we know this is a a vessel that god has given us we utilize it to its best and god knows our pain our suffering he says, one day it will all be ended and we'll be made new and fully restored. No more pain and suffering. When he talks about peace, he talks about peace in our relationships. No more fighting, arguing. We forgive as God forgave. There's even peace in, in our finances. Everything fits into place. We live within our means, giving unto God uh, our first portion of the tithe. So I, I hope you'll be blessed with God's peace and goodness. Well, we got to close the Bible. So many great Christmas songs. I'm going to do 
Let's close with one verse from a little town of Bethlehem where Jesus was born, prophesied. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. We're almost there. It's greatest day of the year, Christmas. Let's say a prayer. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to study your word for St. Luke, for Elizabeth, for Zechariah, for Joseph, and the Virgin Mary. Thank you for the lowly shepherds and the, the angels, your messengers, and Gabriel. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the wonder and the beauty of Christmas and the little ones who remind us of Jesus and the good parents and the coming of your light into this world of darkness. Help us make room for you in the busyness of our lives. Amen. Thank you, friends. Uh, we'll have one more Bible study on the Gospel of John.